consolation in the memory. All right, good evening, everyone. We are going to call the May 5th, 2014 City Council meeting to order. And tonight, we have quite the honor for uh, Pledge of Allegiance. We actually have Ashley Hoot, or Haley Hooten, excuse me, that is here, and then also the scouts from Troop uh, 814 that will be leading us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Scouts. Park guard attention. Audience, please rise. Park guard present the colors. Please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Scouts and Haley. Okay. Now, Haley, you look familiar because I believe your brother was here just a couple months ago doing the pledge for us, correct? Yes, sir, he was. All right. So anyway, I see him here in the audience. Austin, how are you? Good. Wonderful, wonderful. Okay, and who, who brought you tonight? My mom and my dad. Wonderful. And what are their names? Tawny and Jeremy Hooten. Wonderful. Officer Hooten. Okay, and now why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself. Uh, you're the junior high, so what grade are you in? What's your favorite class? Those kind of things. Well, my name is Haley Hooten. I'm a ninth grader at Stillwater Junior High, and my favorite subject is English. <laughs> Wonderful. What, uh, what do you like to do outside of school? Um, I'm actually an FFA, and I like to give speeches, and I like to show sheep and cattle. Wonderful. Wonderful. All right. Council, you guys have any other questions? I promised her I wouldn't ask who her boyfriend was. So I, do <laughs> <laughs> I told her I would. Thank so. you. Any other questions? No. All right, wonderful. Haley, thank you very much. Thank, right you. Now. thank you. And Troop uh, 814, thank you guys for participating. And I also learned tonight that a couple weeks ago, you guys were out for the big cleanup at Lake McMurtry. So we appreciate your guys' help in making Stillwater and Lake McMurtry a better place. So thank you guys for being here tonight and for all that you do for our community. I'm going to run down and Haley, let's get a picture. And then we've got three proclamations this evening. I'll come up later. Okay, we we do have a proclamation uh, for uh, Bike Month and Bike to Work Week. Okay. Whereas the bicycle is a viable and environmentally sound form of transportation and an excellent form of recreation, and whereas creating bicycle-friendly communities has been shown to improve citizens' health, well-being, and quality of life, to boost community spirit, to improve traffic safety, and to reduce pollution and congestion. And whereas the education of bicyclists and motorists as to the proper and safe operation of bicycles is important to ensure the safety and comfort of all users. And whereas bicycling activities and attractions have great potential to have a positive impact on the state's economy and tourism industry and to stimulate economic development by making the state attractive to businesses and citizens who enjoy the out of doors and healthy lifestyles. And whereas the League of American Bicyclists and the Red Dirt Peddlers will be promoting bicycling as a leisure activity as well as an environmentally friendly alternative to the automobile during the month of May. Now therefore, I, John Bartley, Mayor of the City of Stillwater, do hereby proclaim the month of May 2014 in the City of Stillwater as National Bike Month and Bicycle Safety Month and the week of May 12th to 16th, 2014, as Bike to Work Week, and urge all who support bicycling to participate in the events plan, and urge all road users to share the road safely with bicyclists. Uh, 
I just want to thank the mayor and I want to thank the city of Stillwater for their continued support. Uh, bicycling, uh, uh, especially the red earth peddlers and bicycling uh, in the bicycling community at large. Um, so I will reiterate everything that you just said. And uh, um, again, thanks for your support um, with events like Free Will and everything else that we have coming up this summer. So thanks again. That would be great. Yeah. Good. Everybody wait. Oh, Why not? We hear it a little that way. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Doing all right. Good to see you. Next, we have Gladine Allred with us for our next proclamation. Whereas May 2014 marks the 51st anniversary of President John F. Kennedy designating the month of May as Senior Citizens Month to encourage the nation to pay, it, pay tribute to older people across the country. And whereas in 1980, President Jimmy Carter proclaimed that the name be changed to Older Americans Month, a time to celebrate those 65 and older through ceremonies, events, and public recognition. And whereas the city of Stillwater was named Oklahoma's first certified retirement community in 2011, recognizing the city's continuing support and recognitions of those retired citizens and their contribution to the good of Stillwater and the nation. Now, therefore, I, John Bartley, mayor of the city of Stillwater, do hereby proclaim the month of May 2014 in Stillwater, Oklahoma, as Older Americans Month and urge all citizens to support those 65 and older throughout the year. Well, on behalf of the Certified Retirement Community Committee, I would like to accept this and thank you for your support in helping to make us the first certified retirement community in, uh, in Oklahoma. Uh, we recently sponsored our first event, Age of Champions, and look forward to sponsoring future events to attract people to visit Stillwater and to retire in Stillwater. Thank you. Whereas community action agencies were created when the Economic Opportunity Act of 1964 was signed into law, and whereas community action agencies have a 50-year history of promoting self-sufficiency for the limited income, and whereas community action agencies have made an essential contribution to individuals and families in Oklahoma by providing them with innovative and cost-effective programs, and whereas community action agencies are needed as a major participants in the reform of the welfare system as we know it, and whereas welfare reform in Oklahoma has benefited from the state's partnership with community action agencies, and whereas the limited income continue to need opportunities to improve their lives and their living conditions, thus ensuring that all citizens are able to live in dignity, and whereas Oklahoma and the entire United States must continue to wage war on poverty by providing support and opportunities for all citizens in need of assistance. 
Now therefore, I, John Bartley, Mayor of the City of Stillwater, do hereby proclaim in Stillwater, in recognition of the hard work and dedication of Central Oklahoma Community Action Agency, the month of 2014 as Community Action Month. We would just like to thank the community for your continued support um, and the support of Community Action in all of our programs. We couldn't do it without you. Thank you. take us down to the consent docket and we have items uh, A through C on the consent docket. Do I wish to remove anything from the consent docket? Is there a motion on the consent docket? I move to approve. Second. Motion second to approve consent docket. That is approved five to zero. That'll take us down to public hearings. And our public hearing for the evening is uh, in connection with our community development block grant program. Mr. Dorman, do we have good notice? Yes, you are. Wonderful, thank you. That's okay. Good evening. Paula Dennison, Development Services. We have before you our annual project selection for our CDBG application, and this is for the 2014. As you know, this is funded by HUD. We are part of the state's small city set aside. Our grant allocation this year is uh, just over $147,000. There's a one-to-one -one match, so we're looking at projects in the value of 294000 we did have uh, public input as required under the citizen participation plan. And um, the project that was selected is the drainage channel at Hall and Lee Streets. In the map, this is Hall Street, Lee Street, and you can see the drainage channel. It primarily affects the properties that front Hall Street. This project has been one of the projects that was identified for qualifying for the low to moderate income CDBG um, for a number of years. Um, there have been a couple of obstacles in the past. Those obstacles have been overcome and we actually have easement commitments from the property owners along Hall Street. So if you have any questions at this time, I will be more than happy to answer them before the public hearing. Any questions? Thank you. Hmm? Okay. Just checking. We did not have anyone sign up to speak, uh, but we will open up public hearing. No one has signed up to speak, and so we will close the public hearing. Ms. Dennison. Thank you. Thank you. Staff's recommendation is to accept this project for our 2014 CDBG grant. Um, authorize the mayor to sign the documents and I can tell you there is great enthusiasm from the property owners that this project is moving forward for consideration. I bet so. I bet so. We just <clears throat> note this is a, a project that we've looked at for all nine years that I've been here and it was looked at before then. Unfortunately when that subdivision was originally platted there was not a drainage easement on all of the properties. There were a couple of properties, and so it was all private property. A lot of frustrations why the city didn't come down and align the channel and fix it, and we, we can't legally go on private property and, and work. And over the years, there's always been some property owners a little reluctant to easements, and so I commend staff for working with all the homeowners and um, finally overcoming some of those obstacles. So this, is, this is a much, much needed project, and, 
it's pretty exciting. I, th I think there's going to be some long-term residents that are going to be very excited about this. Yes, sir. I agree. Any questions of staff? Okay. Thank you. Right. Conversation, debate. Staff's recommendation is for this project for the Move on Block Grant. Motion to approve. Second. A motion to approve and a second. And that is approved five to zero. That'll take us down to general orders and first on the General Orders, may I say? Yes, sir. I'd just like to recommend item A, the uh, International Firefighters Agreement. I would recommend that that be passed and we come back to, to that after executive session. That makes sense. We will do that. Uh, second on the agenda under General Orders is bid recommendation <coughs> for the payment management. Dr. Peake. Thank you, Mayor and Council. Jason Peake, Transportation Director. I just had a, uh, a short presentation uh, for you because I know some of the council uh, was not here uh, when we actually got uh, this program started. Uh, the action item before you tonight is actually to award a contract uh, for reconstruction of South Monroe Street from 6th Avenue to 9th Avenue, 19th Avenue from Western over to Walnut, uh, and Walnut Street from 19th down to 26, and also the intersection of uh, 7th Avenue and Duncan, uh, immediately adjacent to uh, the courthouse. Um, how did we get there to this uh, reconstruction award? Well, last year in 2013, we had a work session with Mayor and Council to talk about what is pavement management. And this graph before you is basically showing the life cycle of pavement. Uh, up at the, uh, the top end at Excellent, that's basically a brand new road. It starts out and over time as that road is used and we have weather and environment, it declines. How we invest our, our limited resources in that road determines ultimately where the quality uh, of the road is over time. So you can see up here kind of on the flatter part of the curve, this is where we like to invest in what's called preventative maintenance. If we can invest money here during this part of the life cycle, we can actually push this curve out and kind of uh, delay when that pavement starts to fall into this condition. In this area, with our good and fair and poor, this is a road that basically enters what we call a rehabilitation uh, type strategy for maintenance. And the roads that are before you tonight basically uh, are at their point in their life cycle where our only option is reconstruction. And what we came to the council was our previous strategy was only to focus on that reconstruction, the bottom part of the, of the curve of streets. And we basically said, you know, there's a different way we could go about doing it, investing some dollars in preventative maintenance, some dollars in rehabilitation, and some in reconstruction. So what this chart uh, is trying to convey to you is based on all the bids that we've received for these different strategies this year, um, we're doing what's called crack sealing and thin overlay. This is our preventative maintenance. You can see that the cost of that has ranged from 33 cents a square yard to $4.59 or $4.59 cents a square yard. And with this limited investment, it's about $431,000 out of the $4 million budget, we're touching 63 lane miles of pavement throughout the city. The bid item before you tonight is basically reflected singly by this line. It's $99.10 a square yard. That's touching uh, basically 2.4 lane miles of pavement. And so uh, going back to that original graph, by spending a little bit of money up here on our pavements that are in, in good to excellent condition, we kind of can delay when they will be down here in the rehabilitation part or the reconstruction. Uh, the work that's going on currently around town, what you actually see is the, what we call the rehab work. This is where we're milling pavement, grinding off that old asphalt layer, putting down new asphalt layer. And uh, that will be going on for the next two months. Uh, if you award the, the contract on the reconstruction work tonight, uh, we could have an early start date of June 6 on that reconstruction and look at completing the reconstruction uh, portion by November. But all this work up here will be done by June 30th. Uh, this is a general overview map of the city. What's important uh, 
is not the fine details, but what you will see is how colors basically cover the entire city. So the 77 lane miles of work that was funded by the FY14 pavement management program are basically going on throughout the entire city. Right now, what folks are seeing is around the high school on Husband, Franklin, Redbud, Dell. Uh, the contractor will be moving over to uh, North Monroe Street, uh, Sanger Edition, and some places southwest, southeast. And then the reconstruction work, we've got South Monroe and then 19th and Walnut. And then the crack ceiling work has been going on uh, throughout town. So it's kind of a brief overview of the program, where we are, and like I said tonight, what you're specifically being asked to do is to award a construction contract to a vendor just for that reconstruction portion of work. And with that, I'd be happy to answer any questions uh, that you may have. Is there any questions to Dr. Peake, either on this award or payment <clears throat> management system as a whole? At $4 million a year, how long will it take before we're to the point where we won't be putting so much money into the reconstruction category? Ten years is basically what we looked at as far as the time frame of that $4 million uh, uh, cost. I mean, if you think about 440 lane miles of pavement that we have through the city, as we grow, we may add uh, additional lane miles. But the, the entire uh, looking at that $4 million annual allocation was basically to get the majority of our streets and that good mm -hmm. uh, range, which would basically decrease our, our reconstruction budget on an annual basis, right. let's say to a, a lane mile, that would be the ultimate goal. Um, Thank you. Yes, sir. I would just like to say I, I like seeing the signs around town that say your tax dollars at work and uh, all the action that's going on. Oh, well, yeah, absolutely. You know, I'd like to give a shout out to our marketing department that helped us put that together. And what you need to understand is the folks making this pavement management program happening are my staff, Michael Stevenson, Charlotte Lovern, Rick Butler, and Kevin Crew. They're the folks kind of behind the scenes making this all happen. So they're doing a good, good job. Can you say the, the time frame again? You said July to August? So the, the bid that you're awarding tonight, this is reconstruction work. This is the most disruptive parts of the project where we physically come in and we remove your street and we have to put it back. If you award tonight, the time frame we've laid out is issue a notice to proceed by contract to the contractor by June 6. Uh, within the contract, what we've estimated as a time to completion is November 11th for them to complete all that work. Uh, the one thing I should point out, something we've done differently than in the past, we have incentives in this contract, which is not something that we've typically done. We do something called liquidated damages, uh, that if a contractor doesn't meet our deadlines, they're assessed a, liquidate, a fee for every day they're over our deadline. This one, uh, you know, we know Monroe Street, that's a collector road, has a lot of uh, traffic on it, plus just the disruptive nature of tearing up the street in front of people's property that can limit access. We've put a monetary incentive. So every day that the contractor finishes early on certain porches, portions of the job, they can receive a monetary payment just for that early finish date. Is there, still a, uh, is there still a fine, though, if they don't get done? Yes. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it's, it's, you know, the carrot and the stick uh, type approach. Typically, we've only used the stick. In this case, we have incentives. Well, I, I like the idea of the incentives. I was talking with a couple of guys at ODOT, and they're into the incentive business. It recognizes the disruption to the neighborhood has value, and we Absolutely. need to get the projects completed. And if we have to give a contractor some incentive to get it done earlier than planned, Great for the that's great for the community and the people that are dealing with the reconstruction. So I like it. Agreed. Okay. Any other questions? Thank you, Dr. Peake. Thank you. Is there a motion on the staff recommendation? I move to approve. Second. second. Motion and second to approve staff recommendation. And that is approved five to zero. Uh, next on general orders is uh, amendment to chapter three. Mr. McClenny. Yes, this John McClenny, external services director. This would amend chapter three alcoholic beverages to allow 3.2 beer sales and special events uh, out at Lake McMurtry. 
and this is a request from the Friends of Lake McMurtry. This will allow them to have a greater variety of special events, kind of affects their bottom line as they're managing the lake for us. In addition to that change, there's a few uh, language changes in here to kind of clean up the entire ordinance that Mr. Dorman could be uh, more educated on. And Dan Lawrence with the Friends of Lake McMurtry is here if there are any questions about kind of what their thinking is on this. And this is very similar to what we did several years ago when we changed it at Boomer Lake to allow 3-2 beer at special events there. Questions for Mr. McClenny or Mr. Lawrence? All right, are we looking for action down on the ordinance side? Yes, sir. Okay, we'll take it up when we get to the ordinance on any other questions. Thank you. Okay. All right, then uh, quarterly financial reports. Slam. Good evening, Marcy Lamb, CFO. What? Hello. Destroyed the equipment as I left. Okay, I'm here to talk to you about the uh, financial reports for the third quarter of the fiscal year. And one of the most important things to note <clears throat> about this quarter is that we have, as we've been going through the budget process for 2015, we have done a lot of revenue estimate, uh, re-estimates, and so those are included in these reports, uh, trying to get a better idea of where we're gonna end up for the fiscal year. We have also gone through uh, looking at our expenditure budget, trying to make sure that uh, we have those estimates uh, clearly looked at for the end of the fiscal year. We're identifying items that uh, maybe aren't going to be done or that <clears throat> need to be moved to the next fiscal year, uh, some of those things. But um, all in all, our revenues are uh, basically ahead of what we've projected and our expenditures are uh, for the most part well below what we've projected. In the general fund, the revenues are 75.79% of their original uh, fiscal year 14 revenue projection, with sales tax revenues at the quarter end 83.18% uh, of the annual projection. Use tax is 0.11% over the original annual budget projection, and interest revenue is over the annual target by 28.19. Interest revenue is one of those revenues that kind of varies from quarter to quarter. This is one of those quarters where we had um, investments maturing, so our in interest came in. We uh, follow state law, so we basically hold our investments to maturity. So a lot of times uh, you won't see our interest payments coming in until maturity. So we did have some investments mature. Our other revenues are over our annual projections by 11.67. And some of the items in our other revenues are eBay sales of our surplus equipment, water sales for oil operations, and then also forfeitures from our city's retirement plan. The ambulance revenue that's presented in the worksheets is just represents settlements of insurance because as you know, our ambulance service is outsourced and these are just residual payments still coming in, um, things from uh, lawsuits and, and uh, medical claims that have been protested and eventually resolved. Grant revenue, uh, there has been a lot of rev uh, revisions to our grant revenues, mostly in the area of CDBG, uh, over a million dollars of a revision for our storm shelter grants, uh, which those have been, we've been sending checks out of here, uh, very hot and heavy for that. And as I said, we've, we've looked at all of the categories of revenues in the general fund uh, to see what we could revise up uh, to get a better cash balance going forward for a 2015 budget. Total expenditures for the general fund are 63% of the original projection. And all of those expenditures are within quarterly targets when accounting for seasonal activity. We do have some um, that are uh, over because of seasonal. Uh, activity. Uh, we have some that are over, like we have a contract. We've already expended uh, all of the money for the contract. And we did have one in the general government um, section, our operations division. Uh, that's a new division. We um, have gone over in that budget line item, but that's, uh, there is a revision that's occurred in the fourth quarter that will correct that. Um, I believe that's all the highlights for the general fund. In the other city funds, uh, the majority of the ad valorem taxes 
have been received. We reserve, uh, received the majority of those in December and March. And um, those have been received and they're 86.94% of the annual estimate. We will continue to get some in as they trickle in uh, through the end of the year, but that's um, pretty close to what we estimate at this time of the year. Revenues for the CVB are 7.95 over the annual target, and a lot of those uh, items occurred in the second quarter with uh, our football, pro, um, OSU football, ESPN game day, and recruitment of different events. And then our oil and gas industry, uh, the drilling in the area has also uh, filled up a lot of rooms in the hotels. The expenditures for the other funds are within the quarterly targets and seasonal projections. Um, and as with all the other funds, there are uh, carry forwards that were approved in July uh, that will affect, your, affect the revenue or the expenditure budgets. And those are reflected in the current year estimated year end, co year -end column. <coughs> Excuse me. In the Utilities Authority, the operating revenues for the SUA are 86.76% of the original projection, with electric and water revenues being 87.23 and 76.75, respectively. Customer service fees, including light charges, cutoff notices, and reconnect fees are 2.87% above the quarterly target. Uh, you have a, a revision in the miscellaneous revenue items for the capacity payment from GRDA, and a corresponding revision has been made to purchase power. And that revision was just made for clarification purposes. We had had that netted in the original budget. Uh, the Water Capital Improvement Fund is 68.81% of the annual projection, which is a little less than 75% that we'd expect to see at the third quarter. And part of the reason for that decrease is there's a 15% decrease in water consumption compared to fiscal year 13. And the reason this doesn't show in the operating fund revenue is due to the unanticipated water sales to oil companies and the beginning of the sales under the loan chimney contract. So it's, it's affecting as a decrease in the capital fund, but it's offset in the operating fund. And the Stillwater Economic Development Authority Revenue activity for the CETA, uh, most of that activity comes from the Business Improvement District as far as the revenues go. Uh, there are first quarter car show events and some of the delinquent bid payments from the prior year. Uh, third quarter, we normally receive the bid payments in January and those are received into the uh, Bid District Assessment Fund. And once those are collected and we determine if any um, <clears throat> delinquencies need to be filed as liens, we will close those out and transfer them over into the bid department in the CETA fund. So that will happen in the fourth quarter. All of the other uh, expenditures for CETA are within uh, their quarterly targets as well. Are there any questions? Any questions of staff? You said there's a new division, the operations, and that it was mm -hmm. uh, over a little bit. Can you just explain what uh, operations is? The operations division is um, our division that's I've been identified through the Leap Forward project. And I'm not an expert on that project, but I'll try to explain it. Um, we have identified a, a few individuals that are over those areas uh, to include uh, water, wastewater, uh, parks, Help me out. Somebody. Transportation. 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 And uh, so th there are a few individuals that are in there that are actually managing and supervising that division. And until we get the Leap, Leap Forward project completed and, and figured out how we're going to account for everything, we're leaving the employees that are affected in their normal departments. But we're, we've taken a, a piece of salaries out of the other departments to put into this operations division, which is currently in general government, so it's under the city manager. Um, and so we're revising those budget using salaries from the other activities to put in there. That revision it was budgeted be, for. Yes. I mean, the money was budgeted. We're just reallocating it okay. to there. Any questions, Ms. Lamb? 
Okay, I have one more. Okay. I didn't see in the budget where uh, <coughs> water sales to drilling companies. Where is that? Okay. We, we don't have a line item. We have, we have it actually in two different places. We sell water from Lake McMurtry. We have some drilling operations out in the Lake McMurtry area. And those sales go into the general fund. They just go in as miscellaneous revenues. And then the SUA is also actually selling some water. And so um, those water sales are recorded in the SUA. And once again, just as a miscellaneous water revenue typically kind of unanticipated. We don't normally so have that, but it's due to... Some of it goes in miscellaneous, right? Yeah, well, they will both be in miscellaneous revenues. One will be in the general fund if it's coming out of Lake McMurtry, and the other one will go into SUA if it's an issue. Water, water directly out of the lake mm -hmm. is not a part of a utility system. The lake is owned by the city, and so mm -hmm. that's a general government. Okay. The, the water that comes through a utility system in mm -hmm. SUA, so they'll collect that. So if you don't have the oil royalties, the next best thing is to have some water. <laughs> Thank you. Mm -hmm. okay. uh, not looking for action at this point, just report, correct? Okay. That'll take us down to ordinances, and we have ordinance 3260. What I miss? I mean, oh, I missed budget discussion. I certainly did. Excuse me. I was so excited. Okay. Well, uh, uh, we don't... Um, after last uh, council meeting, their special meeting, we had the budget presentation, went through a lot of information, a lot of numbers, gave copies of the, uh, the spreadsheet to the council with the only broken down to the level of the 100 accounts, 200, 300, 400. You had several questions. We've sent some information back out to you, showing you the operation cost without capital and showing you the capital separate so you can see trends and operating cost versus capital cost. Um, at this point, we, I just put this on here as some, somewhat of a checkpoint tonight. Again, the, the primary question is allocation among services to the, to the public. And um, I think in review process, if you feel like some area of service has been underfunded or overfunded, or you see any shifts. We've tried to take into account, again, you know, there's questions about playground equipment. We try to include those every year. Mr. Peek was talking about pavement management. We get that four million in there. Um, those kinds of uh, items are there. If you see any shifts that ought to be made in, based on what you've heard, uh, we can work on that. If not, uh, what I think we probably need to do is have one more opportunity to show you the numbers in whatever format you would like. Um, if you'd like to get into you know, further discussion of it, we can have a, a study session to go through the details. Or if the, the allocation, there's not much that can be done with those since the last presentation, we can go ahead and put those into a public hearing required format and go directly to public hearing. So it's kind of council's preference at this point. If you want to have a study session prior to the public hearing, then we'll, we'll leave the, the numbers raw uh, until we get through them. And then when you get comfortable with that, then we can put them into a public hearing format. So uh, if you wanted to do the, the special meeting or study session, I would think it should be next Monday or Thursday uh, to try to stay on schedule. I don't want to run push uh, June with this process. I understand on wanting to get us there, and I, that I appreciate. Um, I know council had asked for a, a lot of information at the last meeting, and there's a lot of information to digest. Um, I think right now, and once again, it's kind of one of those, if we want to start really getting into conversation, there's a big difference between conversation and debate up here around a horseshoe or discussion up here around the horseshoe. If we want to have some conversation, I'd highly suggest that we do have a study session where even if we just pull a bunch of tables right here in the middle, and use these TV cameras, or we take a TV camera upstairs to that conference room. <coughs> but if we're gonna have a conversation, let's have a conversation 
where we've got all staff around and we're able to sit down and roll our sleeves up and talk. I think we should have a conversation right here, pull chairs up, staff, and uh, that way the public can, if they're not able to be here, they're able to see it next Monday or Thursday. Give us more time to digest because we've been asking a lot of questions. I love the idea of a conversation. Mm -hmm. Okay. So uh, I guess we coordinate either Monday. Yeah, it's what it, you know, I, council's choice, Monday or Thursday. Whenever there's not a thunder I mean, we've sent uh, a lot of information out. We had a few questions over the weekend. I've sent some of that out today. I'll be ready on Monday, but I can. So I'd, I'd be leaning towards Monday. I kind of, yeah. With me and my life, Monday's kind of just <laughs> blocked off. So. <laughs> All right. So you'll Monday set night. something up for Monday study yes. session. This room. Big group of tables in front. Yep. yep. Okay. Public's welcome. Sure. So. Okay. All right, and then. Council, if you've got questions that you want information ready for next Monday, I would ask that you please get it to Dan by Wednesday to make sure that they've got time to put it in whatever format it is that you're asking for. Tomorrow's great, Wednesday's good. <laughs> Thursday's not so good. Th Thursday gets hard, Thursday yes, gets, I, I understand. Good. Okay, so we'll plan on next Monday, 5, 5.30 regular time. Gotcha. All right, any other questions on that, gang? Okay. Now can I go to ordinance? <laughs> All right, that'll take, that'll take us down to the ordinance, and we have ordinance 3260, Mr. Dorman. An ordinance amending chapter three, alcoholic beverages, article four, non-intoxicating alcoholic beverages, by amending section 3-92, consumption of low point beer and alcoholic beverage and pub, beverages in public places, Warnings permitted, exceptions allowed, penalty, and declaring an emergency. Okay. Uh, and what was in the earlier discussion and looking at the ordinance, what I can see is it's adding, it's adding Boomer, it's cleaning up the lakeside language. Correct. It, okay. It's just, just updating it a little bit, but the only substantive change is to add Boomer, or excuse me, Lake and McMurtry. Part three. Murtry, yeah, apologist. Okay. Conversation? Why well, uh, why are we doing it as an emergency? No, we're not doing anything on an emergency right now. That'd be second reading. Oh. It's just there and okay. ready to roll. I just okay. I didn't know if we had, if someone was rushing to have an event and needed alcohol or something out of it. That that I don't know. <laughs> I, I, I saw that and I was gonna worry about that next meeting when uh second reading came up. Well probably I, I can Days, the best time of the year you take two weeks from tonight and then you add 30 days on you're pretty deep into the summer and they may have some events scheduled earlier. I mean can, can we vote can on it next week Pardon? can we vote on it next week sure. can I can I ask Mr. Lawrence a question is that sure allowed? Mr. Lawrence correct sure. can you I just have a quick question for you Certainly. I, I mean, I guess my, my question is, is do you see the need for this? And if so, why just? Yeah, let me, let me briefly say, we, we like the ordinance that we have now, the no alcohol ordinance, and that's not what we're going for. But for the sustainability of the lake as it is, we need the opportunity and the option that when we have an event come to us and say, we'd like to have a company picnic out at the pavilion in a cordoned off place, but we'd like to have alcoholic beverages. Uh, for us, to, the sustainability of the lake requires us to be able to have those activities too. And we like the no alcohol ordinance that we have for general purposes, but we need the option just like Boomer does for those special, special, uh, special events to have uh, the option to have that so we can attract those events to the lake. Perfect. Thank you. You bet. Anything else? <clears throat> Thank you. Thank you. Okay. I'm good. Any other conversation? A motion to approve first reading. 
I have ordinance second. number 3216. Second. second. We have a motion to second. 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 And that is approved five to zero. Takes down to reports. Mr. Dorman. Request an executive session pursuant to 25 OS subsection 307B2 to discuss labor negotiations with the International Association of Firefighters Local 2095 and Fraternal Order of Police Lodge Number 102. Request an executive session pursuant to 25 OS subsection 307B4 for the purpose of confidential communication with the city attorney regarding a workers' pop compensation claim filed by Vicki Reed. It is my opinion that Public disclosure of this matter will seriously impair the ability of the city council to process this claim uh, and or prosecute or defend any resulting litigation or proceeding in the public interest. Finally, request an executive session for the purpose of confidential communication regarding the purchase or appraisal of real property pursuant to 25 OS subsection 307B3. All right, thank you. Anything else? That's all, sir. Okay. Mr. Galloway? Nothing further. Councilors, anything for any upcoming meetings? Um, I, Mr. Mayor, yes. I had talked about a, um, a discussion about um, rezoning, and that kind of is taken care of with our committee meeting coming up. Okay. So, thank you. Thank you. Anything? Anything else for upcoming meetings? Okay. Can take us down to appointments. Um, now, the tax increment financing, make sure I've got these, the structure correct. In this proposed uh, TIF district that we've talked about, the resolution we passed called for the next step, which is appoint three people one from City Council. That's correct. One from the Planning Commission. That's correct. And then staff someone on staff there, from city council or from city of stillwater there's there's a requirement in the statute that the third member or possibly fourth fifth and sixth and seventh each taxing entity that would be impacted by a tax agreement should have one representative so that comes from if you're doing an ad valorem tax district you'd have to have a member from the county one from meridian one from the public schools and one from the city but this is not affecting ad valorem tax, only city sales tax. So there's only one entity impacted, and that's the city of Stillwater. So Mr. Dorn and I discussed that to be consistent with the law would require one member representing the taxing interest of the city. Is that, is, is that correct, Mr. Dorman? That's, that's how I understand it. Okay. Does oh. the councilman meet that? Pardon? Does the council representative meet that criteria? Well, it fills two roles. It just makes it more, a little more workable if you have a third member to start with. Um, and again, and I, Mr. Dorman, you can give the legal aspect of it, but when the first appointees are appointed, those appointees have the first have a get-together. It's not a meeting uh, other than it's to meet to review a list of seven public members that the, the chairman of that group submits to that committee and that committee will pick three of the out of the seven as members on the committee and I, I was just thinking if you appoint three that gives you a little bit more workable group to select the three public members. Mr. Dorman? No, I, I'm agreeing with what you said just maybe to respond directly to your, your question uh, Mr. Vice Mayor the statute makes a distinction between the council member and representatives of taxing entities. So that's the only reason that we have this third person listed. Okay. Sometimes we're employees, some days we're <laughs> <laughs> So uh, I'm assuming we need to do these separately. Is there three? I would recommend that, yes. Sir. Okay. And I guess the way I'm viewing these are kind of like our other appointments to boards, that process. Uh, we actually talked about this one with the city council one three meetings ago, but it was about at about 1130. So I don't know how many of you guys remember us doing that, but uh, I had nominated and we had accepted uh, vice mayor as the council appointment to this committee. So just to make sure we're all up to speed, I would nominate uh, vice mayor Weaver as a city council appointment to this committee. Second. 
We have a second. Well, that was an enthusiastic. You know, second. <laughs> I heard of a second. Well, I was. As approved, five to zero. Second. Um, second appointment is coming from Planning Commission. So one of our current Planning Commissioners uh, is who has to fill this role, and I would nominate Trey McCune, Chairman of the Planning Commission. I would second that. And that is approved five to zero. And then the third is the representative from the taxing impacted entity. Yes. And I would nominate Marcy Lamb, CFO. I'd second that as well. And that is approved five to zero. Okay, so we have our three people now to form the initial step of that committee what are the next logistical steps and uh, the city appoint the city council party i assume the chair is in lead, so mr weaver uh you would need to as soon as you come up with seven potential public members that's your responsibility as chair and submit that list to a meeting of you and Mr. McCune and Mrs. Lamb and the three of you then select from that list of four. I assume it, it would be okay and acceptable for counselors to recommend names to me. Yes, that yes. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I would appreciate those names. Yeah, absolutely. All right, so. When would you like those? Immediately. Tomorrow. Within a week? Okay. <laughs> yeah, I'd say by next, our meeting next Monday. That means you got to show up. Okay, and then that gets carried down the road. Okay, so, all right, we've got that committee appointed. Wonderful. Okay, I want to, uh, I'm going to recess the city council meeting and let's go to SUA. And then we'll come back and do executive sessions after that. So, we'll, uh, not re yeah, recess city council. And I will call to order the May 5th, 2014 Stillwater Utility Authority meeting. And on the consent docket, there are four items. Does anyone, do any trustees wish to remove an item from the SUA consent docket? Not is there a motion on the consent docket? I move to approve. Second. We have a motion and second to approve consent docket on SUA. <coughs> that is approved five to zero. And then it It'll take us down to general orders. Uh, now, this was the debt management policy that we had the full presentation a couple weeks ago. We had tabled it, subject to call. Uh, the uh, vice chair and I <coughs> worked through it. Were there any substantive changes? I don't Honestly, think there were. I thought there was a few typos. I think they got fixed. Honestly, it was more, I was about to go to sleep needed some more time to consider it and I've had that time and appreciate y'all being willing to table it subject to us calling it back yeah, so we've got it called back does anyone have any other questions on the debt management policy that was presented a couple weeks ago I had a number of questions but I appreciate Marcy answering them for me thank you and they're just because I don't understand all the language yeah that was a busy night Okay, so is there a motion on resolution SUA 2014-2? Move to approve. Second. We have a motion and a second to adopt resolution SUA 2014-2. And that is approved. No further items on the SUA agenda. Is there a motion to adjourn SUA? Has to report. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm going to remind the trustees that the city council has decided to have a study session on the budget next Monday, and I would like for trustees to get their questions about yesterday's stuff to me by Wednesday, if at all possible. Much like the council is doing with the general. <laughs> Thank you for making that distinction between counselors and trustees. Sir, you're welcome. Thank you. Anything else from trustees? Motion to adjourn. We have a motion to adjourn SUA. Second. And a second.
That's approved five to zero. SUA is adjourned. We will reconvene the city council meeting. And there are three executive sessions that are being asked for. One motion can handle them all, can't they, Mr. Dorman? Yes, sir. Is there a motion to move into executive session? I move that we go into executive session. Okay. Motion and a second. And that is approved five to zero. 